G'day guys, how's it going? Welcome to Man Cave Tuesday. Hope you all had a ripple week. Right, eh? What's going on in this video? Bit of concrete removal and concrete laying. Doorbells and phone problems. Of course, we check out what Nay's up to in the woodshop. And sleeping bag sagas, as per usual. <laughs> right, eh? Let's uh, check out this concrete removal. Rightio guys, let's have a look what's going on out the front. Actually, look at that, mandarines. This tree's doing really good. That's the original one that I got. That's uh, Ming the Imper Imperial um, mandarine tree. Right, so as you know, we did all the digging out out the front and, and all that kind of stuff. And bloody hell, you can't see shit. Um, I left, there was the dirt and the there was an edge of concrete that went all the way around there. As you can see, it's not there anymore and went all the way along. I've taken all that out. It was actually quite surprising. It was only a, a thin strip, but the dirt that came out of it actually filled the 6x4 trailer, full load. Took it to the tip, free of charge, got rid of it, and all the concrete took that to uh, ASQ, they free of charge. Normally they charge a little bit of bloody money, but because um, it was only a small amount. Anyway, so I've done a bit of uh, fixing up. There was a couple of loose bricks um, and some cracking, so I've just filled that up. But if we look, this end does have a slight lean. It's always been, for seven years, it's always been like that and hasn't moved. But what I'm going to do is, because you can see, that's the actual base there. Um, and we've exposed that. So, I'm going to concrete, or, as you can see there. I'm going to do that. Just so that it gives that base um, a bit of structure and then of course the uh, the screening is going to come up to that so I'll do that all the way along there I don't know if it's gonna it'll help I don't know whether it, uh, another it might work for another 10 years if it works for another 10 years bloody brilliant now so what have I been doing here look so all this footpath which is just all and it's just getting worse and worse, especially when I drive the, the Jeep and trailer and stuff. It's just all breaking away, it looks ugly. So I've started ripping all that stuff up. Just using the old crowbar. That's all I've got so far. So basically I'm just ripping it up into pieces, manageable, to chuck it in there. And then whatever's left over, the smaller stuff, I'm just crunching that up because that'll be a bit of filler, filler base, so it's less rock that I'm going to have to put in here. So the plan is to all this concrete that you can see running right up to where the driveway is. I'm going to remove that and some of the stuff out there. This is all through here is all going to be a cream color rock. Because now that we've got the grey, that used to be white. It was too bright out here, so I wanted something that was a bit dark. But now that that's got the grey on it, I'm gonna, we're gonna, I think the cream's gonna look a whole lot better on here. And then me and Nay are gonna have a shot at um, doing concrete moulds because I could just go and buy. It'd be cheaper to do it, most probably. Buy the um, what do you call it? Uh, stepping stones, like just square ones. But the whole idea of this garden is it, it's a um, what do you call it, cottage garden, and I think the stepping stones system should work a whole lot bloody, uh, we'll, we'll work with that bloody, that theme I suppose. The garden's looking a bit, bit how you going, but that's because it's um, winter, I reckon we've lost a few um, plants, but um, we'll see what happens.
there you go that's the process <laughs> right here guys I just dropped off that's where the concrete goes so I had a full trailer load and that cost me two bucks two bucks that's bloody brilliant old ASQ eh righto so I should only have one more trailer load um, and I'll have all that stuff removed Right, eh? Rightio, guys. Uh, next day, I bloody woke up and it was raining. I thought, nah, bugger it. I'm just going to get this friggin' done, regardless of the rain. So, another full load on the trailer. And this is it. That is all done. So, now my next job is to get that uh, the concrete all the way along here once that's done then i can lay all the stone oh most probably uh lay the stone and then we'll do the um what do you call it the the large stepping stone stuff just to show you what i mean with the stepping stones we bought these and i believe these are made out of concrete so we want to do this type of thing um but it'll it'll kind of like it'll fill up a. What am I trying to say here, guys? There will be a range of it going through there. Then it'll come along, and at least to that door. But I'll most probably do right along there anyway. And we might might even whack bits and pieces through here as well. Just depends on how hard this is to do. Um, and how much cement and cost and all that kind of stuff but it's something that we can do over time so once we lay the stone uh, and we're ready to do that we'll move the stone away to make the areas where we want to do that um, and yeah hopefully it comes up all right but there you go i've got to go bloody drop this shit off rightio guys it's the next day i think i left you where i was going to go get rid of that uh um concrete i couldn't get rid of the concrete because uh asq was closed on the weekend for the in the industri industrial bloody stuff. Um, so I had to bloody come all the way back with a full load of bloody cement, but anyway. So I've, uh, hang on, let's play a little game. What's in Mark's bin? So we have three bins. That's our green bin, which is green waste. And as you can see, green waste. The red one is just garbage and the yellow one is the recycling if we see this is all the recycling stuff but not much of this thing is this look at that got myself a cement mixer so um so i thought right because i wanted to get the concreting done um i went to bunnings and i thought i'll grab one of those $269 is what that cost. And here it is. So I haven't used it yet. So this is the Ozito, Ozito concrete mixer. It had to, it came in a box, obviously had to put it all together. It took about an hour. It was pretty simple to put together. Uh, downfall to it is that the um, wheelbarrow doesn't fit under when you want to tip it all out so I'm just going to use that I know I could most probably get some stuff to prop it up higher and all that bullshit but for what I'm doing this is going to be fine um, so see I'll tell you what it was quite an ordeal too because I went to Bunnings here in Kangaroo Flat and buddy they looked all over they're still <laughs> running everywhere trying to find one of these they didn't have any we ended up going out to, I ended up buying a hoe and I thought I'd do it the old fashioned way, which I've done plenty of times, just mixing it in the barra. And then they said, what about Epson and Bunnings? Bunnings at Epson. So we checked online and they had two in stock. So we thought, oh, bugger, we'll go to the other side of town. And uh, anyway, found it and got it. Cool, so let's start concreting. So apparently this bag will take uh, uh, this machine will actually take I think it said uh, two and a half of these bags 
you can use mix it in, in one time and for each each one of these bags it takes uh, 2.4 litres of water that's one litre but I'm most probably only going to do two we'll see how we go all right ready guys I think we're all locked in start her up It's a noisy bloody thing. It actually has a thing on it, it says 91 dB. Righto, let's see if we can tip this out. able to turn that on while it's like that. See what happens. Hey, that cleaned it out pretty good. <coughs> right, eh? Well, there you go guys, that's the process. Rightio guys, let's go and see how my bloody concreting, uh, the concreting work went. Booyah, look at that, it is now all done. So, if you hear that tingling, my mobile phone's in there, and I'll tell you why it starts making funny noises when I come out the front. Um, so I've got it a lot thicker here because the it's higher the where the, the foundation is, and then it comes down lower, so I didn't have to put as much on here. I'm leaving that empty because Nay desperately wants uh, the brickwork to be a brick path all the way to the um, front door that's gonna come in through there. So, um, yeah, I didn't need to put cement there. That then comes all the way around. And then finished off there. So hopefully tomorrow I can go and get rid of that uh, cement out of, the, uh, out of the trailer. And then I can go start getting the, uh, the crushed rock. Start filling this up. So when I come out the front, sometimes you might hear on the video, my mobile phone goes ting, ting, ting. What it's doing is telling me that there's someone out the front. We've now got these um, ring oh, oh, doorbell things. So if I press that, my, my mobile's going off and obviously there's a chime inside and a chime out in the um, man cave. Uh, and it's obviously, it's video, it's motion censored. So I have another one down here, and that's another doorbell one there. And then, so basically the only way to get into our place or into the backyard, you've got to come you know, through the front. And you can't get through the front without us knowing. Now I can see neighbors wondering who the hell's ringing the doorbell. So we've got another one here, there. It's just me, baby. Doorbell. Yep, it was me. I was explaining uh, <laughs> why my pocket keeps going off. Uh. C, 
so, uh, uh, yeah, so we, we've got those on there. The main reason to start off with was uh, when we're getting parcels and stuff for Bike Bits Australia. Uh, at the moment, things just get dropped off. You don't have to bloody sign for it. Um, but before, when you signed, they'd, they'd come. I don't know whether they'd bloody knock or we'd be at the back and we'd even hear them and then they'd pee off and then they'd lock, leave the little card and you'd have to go and collect it or the next day or whatever. So that's why we got those. But it's now a really pretty good uh, security thing as well. So it doesn't matter where we are, it wouldn't matter where we are in the world. Um, if someone comes someone comes through the, through the front, whether they ding or not, we know that someone's there. We can actually talk to them. We can go live on the phone, talk to them, um, or say, hey, piss off, what are you bloody doing? <laughs> um, yeah, pretty bloody good. Anyway, that's the reason why my thing goes off every now and then. <laughs> Actually guys, I'll just show you. So we've got the carport, and this is shots uh, from last night. So it has the, what do you call it, the night vision. That's out the front, the front door, and then that's the side gate. And you'll see that these are now starting to update to the current stuff. If I was to go into, oh, let's say, the front door, and I'm trying to do this through the screen. Yeah, you'll see that's me obviously walking around, it's picked up and it's taken a recording. And of course it also notifies me. So that's ring.com, got it from Bunnings. Bloody brilliant. So, Nay has this on her mobile, so her she gets notified on her mobile, I get notified on my mobile, and then we've got, these are the chimes, so that's a chime, it's just plug in, um, same as in the house, and um, the one, the doorbells, you can have them either, you can wire them in, or you can just use the, the battery, we're using the battery, and I tell you what, it's really good, like you can check the battery on the mobile phone, I don't know how long we've had them. We're nearly getting to a month. It'll be interesting to see what. Um, so if I go to the front door, the front door one we've had the longest. And if I look at, I'll put your short lookers on, Mark. Uh, where are we? Device health. So that battery level is now down to forty-three percent. So you easily get a month without having to recharge them. Uh, and if I go back, so out of there, uh, the carport, the carport and the side gate, of um, they haven't been as long. Where are we? Sorry, guys, but some of you guys might be interested. Ah, so 39% because actually the carport gets the most use. Cool. There you go. <laughs> that the old wheel of death has had a bit of a makeover i'm still going to get to those giveaways bear with me right out on a more serious note let's have a look at max he's holding a phone and the issues that i've had right here guys so the problem that i'm having current well it's a, the problem that i'm having is that the main camera on this phone has now failed and this is the third one in a row. So if I try and take, go to the camera, it's going to bring it up and then it's just going to go, bloop. It will not work. Come on, hurry up. I haven't got all, there you go, boom, didn't work. But if I do take a selfie, hey presto, it's working. So it's, it's the rear, the, the main camera that's not working. So I was thinking, oh, maybe it's, is it this bloody gub holder? Like it does such, I love this gub holder, it just works so, it's easy, it, it holds it, doesn't stuff around with your buttons. Um, you know, it, I don't know, it, was it something to do with this? And then I thought, no, actually, I had the, the one that I had before this was the X-Grip mount. And I had that with my big iPhone, which I'll, I'll show you in a minute. Um, 
and I had the same problem to the rear camera. It didn't fully stop working, but the focus on that one, um, hang on. Right here, guys, just so you know, I've got shit going on everywhere. I've got bloody stuff down there. I've got all this stuff here. I will get to you, I'll tell you about what's going on here and oh my God, the hell, that bloody shit going on. I've got Nays friggin' wood in here. <laughs> Righto, let's have a look at these phones. Rightio, so this is not my current one, that's my current one. So this phone here is a um, Google Pixel 3a. Love this phone, I changed over to Android because all the phones that I've had before that were have been iPhones, many more than this obviously. Um, but obviously with the bloody cameras breaking on, I went, I've had it, I've had it with these bloody iPhones. I'm, I'm changing over to the dark side and I'm going to Android. I just changed over and it's like, beauty, no worries, love Android. I could easily go back to iPhone and say the same bloody thing. All much of a muchness to me. Um, I just want the things to do, you know, what I want. So, oh, jeez, bloody hell, I was doing a selfie. It's crazy, isn't it, that you can now press on here and it says take a selfie that's that's where we're living these days <laughs> I suppose I'm doing a selfie right now aren't I so what am I talking about right so this one here the iPhone is just not the iPhone the pixel 3a the camera has bugged on it that rear camera just errors every time it goes to a blank screen and then crashes out of that app I have gone through um, with all the support stuff tried everything all the bits and pieces storage clearing and bloody resetting and all that kind of stuff uninstalling reinstalling does not it's obviously a hardware problem with that this one here big iphone i can't remember what bloody one it is i just charged it up it's still bloody active and working um the camera on this one actually fires up but it won't it, it gets all blurry and it won't focus exactly the same problem with this one oh, I've got to remember what I'm bloody doing uh, uh, camera yeah this one this one's a little bit this this one won't focus but this one gets waves in it it does all this wavy wavy thing yeah it's, it's pretty bloody trippy actually but it's no good if you want to take a photo um, and I suppose I can, I'm dealing with it at the moment, but my biggest thing with this, I need a, a, a phone with a camera because I use QuickBooks and uh, Receipt Bank. So any receipt that I get, whether it's a fuel docket or whatever, I just take a picture of that fuel docket. It automatically goes up into the Never Never, into my QuickBooks, and hey presto, creates a bill and an expense and just... Technology is crazy good these days. But now what I'm having to do is do take the selfie thing, hold this like that, dangle the the um, the receipt and try and see that I'm getting an in. <laughs> crazy. So now that I've waffled on all that bloody time, I just I'm wondering has anybody else had issues with stuff like that from the phones being on the bike? That's the that's the one th constant thing um, is that all these uh, phones have been wow all right no worry panic attack doesn't matter it's gone um, all the bikes no sorry keep it going Mark it doesn't matter they know you're a bloody idiot um, all these phones have been on max the DR650 sitting on the handlebar. They've all used been on a RAM mount. Uh, one was with the X grip. These two were with the um, the gub holder. So there's a lot in the mix, and it's like oh, I just don't know what it is. Is it is it just sheer luck that I've had the last three phones? And remember, two iPhones and an Android. So there's no common theme different models that the rear camera only the rear camera on all the phones the facing you know the one that faces you works no worries it's only that other one and they're not all 
one doesn't focus correctly, one has wavy lines through it, and the other one doesn't work. So it's like there's no consistency, but there is a consistency, if you know what I mean. Now I feel like I'm going crazy, but anyway. Has anybody else had issues with cameras on their bikes? It's a bit of a hard one to know because, yeah, I don't know. I don't know, I put it out there, there you go. What do you reckon? Is Mark a crazy bastard? Hell yes. <laughs> Rightio, so the idea at the moment is to try and compact all those um, big rocks. Hang on, I can't do this with you guys there. Squash them all down. What the hell's going on in my shed? My shed! Sorry? <laughs> Well, since we were bloody looking up, she shut the bloody door on me, the bitch. What's Nay up to? What's. I didn't say anything. I didn't say the bitch word. <laughs> so, what are we doing? Memo pads of all different colours. What do you got? Jeez. One, two, three, four, five. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to control. Yep. So these are hacksaw blades cut in half. Is that right? Yeah, well not quite in half, but yeah. Oh, so you only get one hacksaw blade per? Yeah. All oh, right. So just cut to size. Yeah. Cool bananas. It's got some signs. What's that? A Suzuki DR650, a K, uh, another KLX one. It's not another KLX. Is it? It's not another one? You've already done a KLX. No, I did a KLR. Oh, right, well, there you go. Oh, Jesus. Oh, so this is a KLX, not a KLR. There you go. Excellent. All right, I'll leave you to it. Okay. Actually, I lied. I thought this might be interesting. Putting a screw in? No, the way that you do it so that they're a little thin cut. So you put a washer in behind it. So that gives, leaves you a little gap. There you go. That's how the magic happens. <laughs> Friday. What do you want? You want something to eat? You're very annoying. You know there's leftover roast, don't you? Mm -hmm. Is this what you want? It's here. Alright, rest in your bowl. That's it. Otherwise you'll poop too much.
Go ahead, eat it. Last night we had a, a roast. Uh, the two boys and the girls came over. Um, I don't know, last man cave, it doesn't matter. I mentioned about something going on. I couldn't say it because blah, blah, blah. blah. Uh, not Matt, not Matt and Haley. Brody and Brett uh, are now engaged to be married. I think they'll be getting married in bloody February or something next year. Anyway, while we're talking about that, Haley did them up a picture. Look at that. To the happy couple. Bloody clever. Clever as. In actual fact, there's another one that I've. There's another one here that I haven't shown you. And that was when Haley tells Matt not to do dumb things on the bike, but did I die? Now, I can't say the accent because I tried it and everybody laughed at me, but that's out of the movie Hangover, so that's the, the Asian bloke. Yeah, I didn't get it to, to start off with. <laughs> Righto, I've got to get back to editing. Righto, guys, so I said I was going to tell you about what the hell is going on there and over here. In actual fact, let's start with this thing. So, um, you know, with Matt and the KLR650, he wanting to have that bloody swag on there, and how could we get the swag smaller? We decided to take the big Matt out of that swag, put in this Cedar Summit, my old Cedar Summit thing. That worked really good. We are able to fold it all up, made it really nice and whatever. But on the morning that we were on the way back the second day, it was really cold, which is hence has got me into this whole bloody mess that I'm in at the minute. Um, he didn't roll it up, he just did it pretty rough because it was all icy and crappy and he just bloody strapped it on the back and then off we went. And over time, as we know, anybody that's tied down stuff on the back of a bike, even stuff that you've tied down on a trailer, if things can jiggle and move over time, the things jiggle and move and your straps get loose. And what happened is that's what happened. The straps got loose and his swag went backwards and then went down onto the exhaust, burnt the swag. And we didn't realize at the time, but it also burnt this. So I've got this bloody mess. I'm hoping, not in this video, um, but I'll have, I'm gonna try and I'll cut this crappy bit off and see if I can somehow seal it with um so you'll end up with a, a mat that's a bit you know funny shaped <laughs> we'll give it a shot what do we got to lose um but now there's something oh I've got I'm keeping this out for the minute right so I did that whole bloody um video because I got cold I got cold I bought this new sleeping bag I stuffed up it's only a two degrees Celsius sleeping bag I got cold out there I'm thinking oh shit blah 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 so I thought okay what can I do to change now some people mentioned so you can see that reflective stuff so that's the stuff that I run in the um, insulation for the uh, shed you know that typical stuff I had some of that I cut myself up a piece of that I've got this um, sole what do you call it, emergency bivy, has that mylar bloody stuff on the inside. So what I did was I put that down, I slept here in the in the shed, my Cedar Summit game changer mat, bivy, the sleeping bag, I got my blanket in there, and I was saying I'd bought the, um, the liner, so this is a Cedar Summit Thermo bloody gizmo um, liner, and they state that yeah, you know, right up to 15 degrees um, change Celsius change or warmer. But it's like when I got it and I looked at it, I went, Jesus! I mean, if you look at, it's just like it's just like you know the same as a thin T-shirt. Um, never, it doesn't. Do what it says. It does make it warmer. Yeah, of course it does. So I had that in there, I slept. I was okay, I didn't get shivery cold, I didn't get uncomfortably cold. I could feel the cool. Um, halfway through the night I got a friggin' headache. Uh, so I had a shit sleep. And in the morning it was like, ah, 
bugger it. I'm just not going to go friggin' camping in the winter. This is just stupid. Um, so, on, so now I've been thinking, I don't know whether that really works. I understand the principle that uh, because it's got the, the shiny stuff, that the heat gets reflected back. But because it's so thin, the cold is still coming through, through that. So it's something like that that is dead flat, you know. Um, does that really work that well? I don't know. The other thing that I thought was this mat is a game changer. Comfortability, it's fantastic. It's not as noisy as well as this. But I'm now wondering, is this actually a colder mat than this one? And the reason is that the air in there is just in one chamber. There's one chamber full of air. This actually has, so you've got the air, so that's one chamber on, the, on that side. And then on the other side, there's a chamber on there. So would that make this a warmer mat than that one? I don't know. I'm gonna to have to do some research, but there you go. So <sighs> the other problem with this, even if this did solve the problem of, you know, it, it makes it warmer and it does, but it's the amount of stuff around. We've got this thing, which it's a fairly tight, it's just, it's an emergency thing. But having that, the sleeping bag, the blanket, having this, so you've got to hop in that, in that, in that. It's like fucking bloody hell. Uh, that's not the solution. Absolutely not the solution. Um, I, I'm thinking the the solution is I've just got to buy a um, you know, minus 10 sleeping bag. And I think I'm just going to have to you know, suck it up and pay the $400, $500 to get it in the down um, size. So then I can have that compactability and the lightness as opposed to my, you know, my old one, which is you know, a lot heavier. It doesn't pack down as much. Don't get me wrong, I can still use that and happily, but it's the whole, you know, you're just trying to get better, 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 better. Makes good videos, maybe. <laughs> so there, there you go. So that's what's going on in here. Righto, cool, back to the bloody man cave. Sorry, actually, I went doing the editing and I thought I'll, I'll, I'll check up the R rating, because someone said about the R rating seemed pretty low on this one, and I went, well, maybe Cedar Summit actually has the R ratings for the mats, and they do. They do. So, I think this one here has an R rating of four. Here's the picture of whatever it is. And the R rating for this is 3.2. Now, this is the insulated one. You can get a lot of these stuff, you can get them that they're not insulated, and the R values just drop dramatically, like down to one or whatever it is. Um, so it's not a huge difference between the two, but there is a difference. So this pad is um, a colder pad than this. So I was obviously thinking that could have a little bit of a um, thing to it. Now, another thing that I started, I started searching on the internet, you know, ground, bloody, how to protect and all that. Um, so we're talking about this stuff. So yeah, it does the radiating, but it's not stopping the cold coming through. There is nothing there, no little bubbles of air. What's the aero bars? The bubbles of air that make the difference. Any of you old blokes remember that? That was their, uh, it supposed to be still is now. Um, so the CCF mats, so remember the swag, and in the swag, Rick, the smart man Rick, had one of those it's like a foam and then it had that silver stuff on it. He had that in that swag as well as the mattress. So I've just spoken to Matt. I'm gonna grab that because he doesn't need it because he's toasty warm in his bloody swag. <laughs> um, and I'll cut a piece out and then test that again. Now I, I neglected to say 
that when I first slept in here and I got cold and I just had this mat and the sleeping bag, and did I have a blanket? Can't remember. And I got cold. But then when I did all, and that was at 11 degrees in the shed, it was 11 degrees, stayed pretty constant all night. But then at six degrees, it was six degrees when I did this and I had that, I had everything in here. So it was colder and I was warmer. So that's a good thing. I don't know where I was going. I was actually going to say that it didn't make a big difference, but that kind of like it was warmer when I had it and it was colder. So um, it did make a difference. But for the amount of stuff, it still did make enough of a difference for me. Right. So anyway, I just wanted to throw that in. <laughs> so this will be a continuing saga. I will get to the end of it. As long as that, that thing isn't too bulky, I think that'll be a big thing. But that's what I've got to remember. This is only for winter. So I, you know, I take the extra bulky thing for winter. In summer, I would get away with just that. And even, even just that. And then when it does get colder, you know, I have that. It's just when it gets that next colder thing and that's when it just, I, it, like, as soon as I get uncomfortable, I get a bit bitchy, you know? I don't like to be uncomfortable. Not when I'm bloody sleeping. And then I've got to get up and start riding and doing bloody crazy stuff. All right, shut up, Mark, you idiot. <laughs> well, there you go, guys. That's Man Cave Tuesday done and dusted for another week. Hope you all enjoyed it. Um, tomorrow is actually the middle of winter here in Australia, the shortest day of the year. Thank God for that, because after tomorrow, Everything starts getting longer, warmer, all that. Eh, shut up, Mark, you idiot. Righto, guys, keep on riding, and if you ain't riding, keep on keeping on.